This is Nick with LogosByNick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create these vector puzzle pieces that connect together fluidly using Inkscape. And at any point in this tutorial you could look down at the bottom left hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keystrokes I'm using. So I'll minimize this and we'll get started here in Inkscape. By the way, if you'd like to know how you can make Inkscape appear dark and with these custom icons, a link to that information will be in the description of the video. So the first thing we want to do is make sure the view is set to custom. Then we'll zoom in at one to one. We'll open up the uh, align and distribute menu and we're going to want last selected chosen from that drop down. And then we'll open up the edit objects, colors, gradients, and stroke menu. So the first thing we want to do is to, is to uh, create an ellipse. So let's come over to the circles and ellipses tool and just click and drag on the canvas to create an ellipse like that. And we're going to bring the opacity down in half and I'm just going to make this red and I'll go back to the select tool and we want to make the width of this 600 and the height of it 300 so we're going to erase whatever that is in there for you for me it's 464 I'm just going to write 600 then hit tab to skip over to the height and then height type in 300 and hit enter we want to, what we want to do now is give this an outline so I'm going to hold shift and click on the color black to give that an outline and you can't see it, but it's it's there. It's very small. Um, I'm going to come over to the Stroke Style tab, and this is set to 0 0.123. I'm going to change this. We want this to be a five-point stroke, so just hit five and hit Enter. And uh, what we'll do now is, if you notice over here, once we added that five-point stroke, the height is now 305 and the width is 605. So we want to make sure the height of this is 300. So uh, we're going to change this back to 300, but before we do that, we want to make sure that we have this button over here turned off, where it says Effect, this, far, this button to the far left. We want to make sure that's turned off, and we want to turn on the lock icon right there, and then we can change this back to 300. Just type 300 three, three, zero, zero and hit Enter, and now we have our oval. It's 300 uh, pixels high with a five-point stroke. So the next thing we want to do is create a rectangle. So we'll come over to, to the Rectangles and Squares tool and create a rectangle going over the center of that uh, ellipse. I'm going to get rid of that outline by holding Shift and clicking on the X. And I'm just going to make this blue. And then I'll go back to the Select tool and I'm going to make the height of this 200. So I'm going to erase whatever, erase whatever value that is in there and height, type in 200. Hit Enter. And then hold Shift and click on the ellipse and make sure it's centered on the vertical and horizontal axis. And with them both selected still, we can go to Path, Cut Path, and then click off of that to deselect everything. And then we could take this piece right here and press Delete on the keyboard to get rid of that, and take this piece right here, press Delete to get rid of that, and we'll get rid of this right here by pressing Delete. So we're left with this object right here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom in to show you. If you notice, the edge of this is like a, a sharp corner. We're going to come over to the Stroke Style tab. We're going to change the Join to Rounded, and we'll change the Cap to Rounded, and it'll, it'll give it a rounded, uh, a rounded cap like that, which is what we want for this. And this line right here is going to make up the edge of the puzzle pieces that, that curve up and down like that. If you look at the shape going within the pattern, that's going to make up the edge of it right there. So what, what I want to do now is... I want to create the circle part of the puzzle piece, which is this right here, where the circle kind of dips in and goes back out. So to do that, I'm going to have to create a customized shape that kind of looks like a, uh, a peanut. Uh, so let's do that now. I'll go to the uh, Circles and Ellipses tool, and I'll hold Control and Shift and click and drag to create a perfectly round circle. And we want to make sure the width and height of this is. Let's go back to the Select tool. We're going to make this 150. So whatever the width is for you, just erase it and type in 150. Hit Enter. And then I'm going to duplicate that by right-clicking it and going to Duplicate. And I'm going to make this half the size. So it'll be 75. I'll make this 75 and hit Enter. And I'm just going to move this off to the right over here. And then hold Shift and click on the other circle and make sure it's centered on the horizontal axis and then we'll click this button over here to the right that says align left edges of the object to the right edge of the anchor to stack them next to each other like that and once we have it arranged like that let's go ahead and click on it to get our rotation handles and I'm going to hold control and grab this bottom right corner and rotate it counterclockwise three steps while holding control so we'll go one two three 
And what I want to do now is duplicate that by hitting Control D on the keyboard. And I'm going to flip that horizontally and vertically. And what I want to do now is come up here and turn on this icon that says Snap to Cusp Nodes. We're going to turn that on. Then we're going to take these objects and just snap it to the edge right there. So it's these two big circles are sitting next to each other and these top ones, uh, these small ones are sitting on top of the outside of that like that. And that's exactly what we're looking for is that object right there. So we'll click off of that to deselect everything. We're going to grab the Bezier pen by pressing B on the keyboard. And we're going to come over here and snap to this node. Once it snaps, go ahead and click. Bring the line over here, snap to that node, click. And then snap up here, click. And over here, and click. And then back to the starting point. And then we'll go to the Select tool. I'm going to turn that green, and I'm going to get rid of that black outline by holding Shift and clicking the X. And I'll just bring the opacity of this down about in half. So what I'll do now is I'll take this blue circle, I'll click on that, and I'll hold Shift and click on this other blue circle, the two small ones, and I'll unify them together by going to Path, Union, and then I'll raise them to the top and hold Shift and click on the uh, green object and go to Path, Difference. And now we can click over all three of those objects and unify them all together by going to Path, Union. And there you'll see we have, it's kind of like a peanut shape. This is going to make for the, um, the rounded part of the puzzle piece that dips in and goes back out kind of like that. So let's flip this around uh, 90 degrees clockwise or counterclockwise either way. I'm going to put this over here. And we're going to give this a five point outline as well. So I'm going to hold shift and click on the color black to give that an outline. And just make sure it's five. It's a five point outline. We want a rounded cap and a rounded join. And let's turn off the fill. And we want to make sure the width of this is 150. So let's come up here and just change that to 150. Hit enter. And then hold shift and click on that line right there. And just make sure it's centered on the vertical and horizontal axis. And then we can click off of it to deselect everything. So I want, what I want to do now is I want to take this line, this little curved line. I'll duplicate that by hitting control D on the keyboard. And then hold shift and click on the peanut shape and go to Path, Cut Path, and then click off of it to deselect everything. And we could take this object right here and just press Delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. And then we'll take our little rounded shape up here. We'll hit Control D on the keyboard to duplicate that and hold Shift and click on um, the curved line and go to Path, Cut Path, and then click off of that to deselect everything. We'll take this little line in the middle here and just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. And we'll take this line, we'll duplicate that by hitting Control D, flip that horizontally, and then take this bottom corner and just snap it onto that bottom corner over there. And then we can click and drag over all three of those shapes and go to Path, Combine. And what I want to do now is, I'm just going to zoom in, make sure everything looks good over here, all right? What we could do now is, I'm going to duplicate this by hitting Control D on the keyboard. And I'll rotate this around 90 degrees clockwise. And I'll take this and snap, actually I'll put this over here, snap these two corners together. And then I'll duplicate that by hitting Control D. I'll flip that horizontally and put this one over here, snap to that corner. And then we could take this object right here, hit Control D to duplicate that, flip that vertically and then take this object and snap it to the top up there. And we now have the shape of our puzzle piece. So what I'm going to do now is click and drag over all of that and go to Path, uh, Combine, and then just hold Control and Shift to scale it down a little bit. You can make the, uh, the, the stroke width a little smaller once you bring it down. I'm going to change this to maybe 3, see how that looks. That's pretty good. Maybe I'll scale this down a little more. And what you could do is if you duplicate that by hitting Control D and take this duplicated copy and rotate that 90 degrees either clockwise or counterclockwise and you could snap it onto the side of the other puzzle piece and I'll duplicate that again by hitting Control D and you'll see we have puzzle pieces that we can connect together like that. I'll take this one, duplicate that, I'll put this over here and this can go on uh, infinitely. We have puzzle pieces that could connect together. Now if you want an individual piece, let me show you something. I'll duplicate this one by hitting Control D 
and I'll bring the opacity of this back down in half. And um, these are all individual stroke pieces connected together. It's not an actual path. It's not something you could color in. If you try to color it in, you're going to get something like that. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to go to path uh, break apart, and it's going to break it apart into all of its individual little pieces again. And I'll, with all of them selected, I'll go to path stroke to path and then path union now we'll go to path break apart and click off of that to deselect everything and I should get rid of that object and you now see we have a solid fill puzzle piece that you can make any color you want but the difference with these is you can't connect these together these won't connect together the way they should if you notice you'll look let me bring the opacity down a little bit to show you. They don't, they don't exactly fit together. If you want pieces that fit together, you'll have to use these ones over here. And that's pretty much it. That's how you can create some vector puzzle pieces using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.